Hi, this is David Huff. Welcome to Five Fold Voices. Five Fold Voices. Welcome to Five Fold Voices, conversations with prominent people in the Five Fold Ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, singers, authors, musicians. Our goal is to give you access to today's mentors in ministry. And now, Five Bold Voices. Brother David, man, I'm so glad to be here in in, uh, Huff Recording Studios. My goodness, what a what a beautiful place this is. We are blessed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I remember. Uh, I, I never. I never got to meet your dad, but I did meet your mom. My goodness, what a what a lady. She mm. was a precious lady. Oh yes, sir. Amen. And you know, my dad. Uh, he was much like my mother, in that uh, he was one of the greatest people. Only a fifth grade education, or maybe even a fourth grade. I never really knew, but I, I knew that he was much smarter than any man I ever knew. It was like he was a college pr- professor, <laughs> but because of so much wisdom that God uh, had blessed him with. Now, now you you got into music because of, of your dad. Yes. Um, well, you know, he had a guitar that uh, he hauled logs for a living okay. and he farmed. We had, we grew cotton and corn and all all the things that country folks would do, you know. And so he had a guitar that when he would get off work, it would stay in the corner, you know, until, you know, he came home. And he took his guitar pretty serious. And um, one day he was out working and I just looked at that guitar and it looked different than any other day yeah. and he was like that's what I'm gonna do is play the guitar like my daddy and uh, we didn't know anything about God back then we just uh, uh, were good people I'm not trying to say I was good but my mother and daddy were great people right. and, and, and so anyway uh, that guitar was it infatuated me so I just wanted to get close to it one day and so when I got it, got the guitar, you know that little hump there. Uh-huh. It looked like a, it looked like a horse or something. <laughs> and my daddy rode horses too. And so, so I thought, hey, that looks like where I would sit. Oh no! And that, the neck up there looked like the horse's head, and it had a strap. And so I got on that thing and I was going to ride it. And so I, how old were you? I was. A lot of people can't remember when they were three and three and a half and four years old. I would say probably four. Wow, okay. And so I was riding that thing and all of a sudden it was like, uh oh, I just heard something. So when Daddy got home, uh, he started to play it and and oh. so it was all out of tune. He said, who been messing my guitar? And uh, I said, uh, what you talking about, Daddy? <laughs> And so he taught me a good lesson, not to ride the guitar, but to play the guitar. How old were you when you started playing guitar? He bought me my first guitar. It was a $10 guitar. It was a Stella guitar. (laughs) And he was going to get me a more expensive guitar, but that guitar, the strings were like way off the (laughs) fret. And so to, to make a chord, you had to really push down on those strings. Yeah. And anybody that knows anything about a guitar, when you first start playing, oh, your yeah. fingers don't have calluses on them, yes. and it, it, it drives the f- string into your finger, and it's so sore that you got to really want to learn and play the guitar to learn and play it because of what you got to go through. But uh, it was worth it. Even if it's a good guitar, even if it's a good guitar, you still got to yeah get those calluses built. Yeah. Now, now Ray and Clay play yeah. did, did you teach those guys how to play or, or how did they learn right. I mean I'm, I always imagine well I'm David and I want to have a band and I got these two brothers here you boys <laughs> gonna learn how to play well see that was before I went to college when I went to college is when 
you know, I formed a group called David and the Giants. Right. A after high school, they, they started a little bit in college, but they were only there in, you know, in form as far as just body, because they weren't there for education. <laughs> and same thing with me. Yeah. I, 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 I only went because my mother and daddy always said, son, you need to go to college someday. Well, I went, I flunked out <laughs> every year, but anyway, so when my brothers went, they came home one day, and I remember it like it was yesterday, but I, I said, what, what are y'all studying to be? And my brother Raymond said, uh, I don't know what we're going to be. We, we, we're not making good grades, and we don't really want to be there. And I said, why don't you learn to play music? And I think they were 17, okay. and my, my brother Raymond said, oh, we're too old to learn to play music. I said, no, you're not. I said, you can do it. And so I, I was working in the music store in Laurel, and I, I, I bought my brother Rayburn a guitar, and I bought my brother Claiborne a bass guitar, and I took it home. And when I tell you they literally would stay up all night long, mm -hmm. they would stay up because they want to make up for a lost time. And so they, they started playing, and so, and now you got to remember that there was a David and the Giants before the Lord. Okay, right. And thank God there was a place that the old David and the Giants ceased to be, and a new David and the Giants was born. Mm -hmm. And so they loved the Beatles, so they started playing Beatle music, and I went to hear them play, and I was amazed that they had learned to play that well in such a short span of time. And so I told him, I said, if y'all would stay at it and work hard, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bring y'all into David and the Giants. And so- So they had to try out. They had to try out. <laughs> but they were my brothers. Yeah. And so anyway, I would say when they were around probably 19 years old, Yeah. Um, we, we all came together, uh, and we were David and the Giants. Uh, when I first started with David and the Giants, we had like horn section and and uh, all that kind of music. But and we played mostly, you know, dances at high school proms. That was the kind of group we were. Mm -hmm. And um, and so they they learned and they, they learned quick. So so when did when did uh, David and the Giants, uh, be, you know, begin to come to the Lord, and, and that you know, you you had you had to you had to begin to make uh, you had to begin to make uh, strides towards the Lord. I've heard stories yeah. of of, uh, of 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 you guys that you you correct me. Okay, you correct me. I've heard stories of you guys. Uh, uh, maybe maybe Ray and Clay that was searching for Jesus, and they would come in from playing in the bars and smoke joints and read the Bible, you know. Oh, yeah. We were so naive to anything about, you know, church or because we were brought up, um, you know, in a, and I'm not saying Baptists are bad people. They're great people. Sure, I mean, exactly. Um, but the little Baptist church we went to, you know, we didn't, we weren't like, um, uh, there was no youth group. There was, it was just nothing exciting for us as as teenagers and young kids to be excited. But looking back, we you know I heard great things there. You know right. some scriptures that that still ring true in my head. You know that, and I, but I do remember one preacher. He he taught it pretty straight and narrow, uh, and it's when I just first started playing music and. I would play at this place uh, in right outside of Bay Springs, Mississippi, okay. and it was a square dance. And I remember going to church, and the preacher preached on honky tonks. That was like no, you know, because you know I didn't want to be identified like uh, as one of those people because I didn't smoke, I didn't drink. I didn't curse. My mom and daddy always told me, don't smoke, don't drink, don't curse, and, and you're going to make it. 
Yeah. And so, but you know, they left out a few other things. I was just to say, there's some other stuff you did. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but uh, but they 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 only you know knew what they knew until later on, and then God used us to go and teach mom and daddy. But so 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 I, I need to stop you. So you, mom and dad told you don't drink, don't smoke, don't curse, and you weren't doing that. So how did how did you get into the to the drug scene? Well, when you go through things, when you go through deep hurts, you're going to go to something. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, um, there was a young lady that we did things wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so she got pregnant and she went to Oklahoma and gave the child away. And you know, I didn't want to marry her because I didn't love her, mm -hmm. and but that was just a sinful life that I, I led. Um, this stayed in the back of my mind, and a, a memory back there. Where's that child at? And, and then we got married, and I got married, and this will be one of the rare times that I will say this, but. She um, she knew that I was in college, and if you're in college, you d you don't have to go to Vietnam. Right. And so people didn't know why there was a Vietnam. Nobody knew why they were, they were over there fighting. Yeah. And a lot of the people that fought over there didn't know why they were fighting. Sure. And I was never anti-American because I am all in as far as this country. Amen. And but. So it was that when we got married, it was she wanted to marry me that I wouldn't have to go uh, to Vietnam. Yeah. And so, long story short, we stayed married, and I was never faithful. I I was never married when I would leave Law, Mississippi. That was the life mm -hmm. that I led, and uh, and of course. And she knew all about it too. And then there was a day that I went uh, into the kitchen and I saw her at the window and she was looking outside the window. And I thought, that looks strange. What's she doing? What she's what she see? And so I said, What what are you doing? And she turned around. <laughs> Now, most of me to be cry, but she said, and she was crying, she said, we'll never find our son. And so I thought, and when she said that, you know, all those memories back there of, mm -hmm. of where he was, yeah. and I said, why would you think that? Why? She said, because, she said, I called where uh, the place, you know, where they, you know, people would go there and adopt children. And she said the adoption place said that they would not give out information where he was. And they took her phone number. Yeah. And so now this was before the Lord. Okay. And so, boy, then that really started driving at me. And so I started doing drugs because I was depressed. And, and so one day... I was at the house, and remember, I was only married there, and we had two children, Lance and Kelly. And so, and I loved them deeply then, and I love them deeply now. Sure. And so, um, I was walking to the house, and I remember this like it was yesterday. She said, would you sit down? I want to talk to you. I said, sure. I said, what's, what's wrong? She said, do you love me? Just like that. Yeah. And I said, you remember how we got married? I said, I never loved you. And she said, I want a divorce. Wow. I said, okay. I said, we'll get a divorce. And so... So there was no emotional attachment there? No. Yeah. Uh, I felt like she loved me, but... Mm -hmm. But those years of living with me, that I wasn't there yeah. just a little. I would only stay in the house at night 
until like around nine o'clock, and that's when the children went to bed. And then I would leave and go to the studio, which was not in the house, it was a distance away. And I, I, that was my life, and then on the weekend, I was off going. And so we went through the divorce, and then it was like my life spiraled even worse because then I looked at my children like, they don't have a daddy that's there with them like I was. And so that started getting me. So then my two brothers, after playing with me all these years, little Ricky, he talks to them, hey, let's, because I was always watching them, trying to keep them out of trouble, you know. <laughs> And so they left the band, and so I had to reform, and that was another break in my heart thing. And so they went another band, and and then you Keith, still had Keith with you, or no? He left with them. I you had, must have been a bad dude for the day. It was the most miserable time, and so I formed another band, and and so then I went with the United Artists Records, and and I had a new single coming out. But this was about everything about to change mm -hmm. when all this happened, when when they left. It happened that I had a guy named Tommy Aldridge. He was a uh, White Snake's drummer, um, several yeah. other, Ozzy Osbourne. I was supposed to say that name sounded really familiar. So, yeah. yeah, okay. And he was my drummer for a while and uh, with David and the Giants. And finally, um, I wanted Keith back. Yeah. So I could tell Tommy's heart wasn't with us anyway. And so we let him go, got Keith back, and we played in Jackson, Mississippi for a frat party. Okay. And I was drinking. And I, I, I but I wasn't drunk because I never got drunk. But loaded, I was loaded on drugs. Okay. And Keith knew it. So he felt he felt fear for me driving back to Laurel from Jackson. So we were on our way back, and this was the start of the turnaround. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Hallelujah. It's great to get to this place, because all that other is such, um, anyway. So, Keith rode back with me. I drove, and he rode with me, and he was watching me, and, and so we were driving along there, and he said, David, he said, I want to talk to you. I said, about what? He said, Jesus. I said, Keith, uh, he had received the Holy Ghost probably three years prior to this. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and we didn't want to hear it then, yeah. my two brothers and I. And I didn't want to hear it then because when you're loaded, you don't want to hear somebody talk about Jesus. Yeah. And But it's, it's something about that name that it brings... Um, condemnation if you're doing wrong right and so man I didn't want to hear that because I was in my own world and so we were driving along there and there was a song that came on and it said something like these words and I was in tune with it and it said is this all there is to this world to this life Wow. and I was thinking is this all that there is that for my life because I wake up I'm smoking a joint or doing something, you know, to get high and loaded. Yeah. And I was thinking, is this all there is to this life? And all of a sudden I looked at over little Ricky, Keith, Keith Thibodeau is his name. <clears throat> and uh, he was still talking about Jesus. And so I started listening to what he had to say. I don't remember exactly what he was saying but I knew it was about Jesus. And so he just, he kept talking all the way from Puckett, Mississippi <laughs> to Laurel, Mississippi. Yeah. And I came down off the drugs. It was like, I felt great. Something happened that night. Now I didn't go all the way with Jesus sure. that night, yeah. but something happened that night. Wow. That started me realizing maybe there is a God out there that knows me and and maybe he loves me so that was part of the road that was part of the road i know that god can see i know that god can hear i 
And so he placed a Bible in my room. Yeah. And when he placed that Bible in my room, I would go to the nightclubs. I would put that, I had a little uh, sports car. And I would put that Bible on the steering wheel. And I would drive down the interstate reading the Bible. I remember it. We played in Hattiesburg, Mississippi a lot. Yeah. And there was a club down there called the Stone Toad. And so I would go... <laughs> Yeah. The stone toe reading the Bible, and I would be looking. And so, then one night, um, my brother Rayburn was in the car. Now, now, I hadn't turned from sin yet. Sure. But I, I knew God was real. And that's the first step wow. to God that you know that He is. He that comes to God must know that He is, Amen. and that He's a rewarder yeah. of okay. those who diligently seek him Amen. and so so raven was in the car with me okay he was over here and i was driving and reading and, and, no, man, and this, maybe not. Okay. Not, not that night <laughs> <laughs> not that night this night he was over here and he was smoking a joint i said raven i said there's more to the bible than what man told us and he was smoking he said man i don't want to hear about it <laughs> just like that I didn't say any more. Okay. Two weeks later, he was reading the Bible, and my brother Claiborne was living with a girl there. Okay. And he and my brother Raven were sharing this house, and and of course Claiborne had this girl who lived with him, and Raven was smoking a joint, drinking wine, and to get to the bathroom, you had to come through Raven's room. Okay. So Claiborne came through one night and Rayburn saw in the Bible where he was living with that girl in sin. So so when he was walking through, he, Rayburn said, Claiborne, let me read you a scripture. <laughs> and so he doesn't know, he doesn't remember what scripture it was, but it was telling him that he was doing wrong. Yeah. And then of course, my brother Rayburn, he hadn't got to his scripture yet. He was smoking a joint. He was smoking a joint and drinking wine. So... Uh, my brother Clayburn, when he heard it, he just walked on in the bathroom. So my brother Rayburn thought, well, he didn't want to hear about that, did he? But when he got in the bathroom, he, it was like it was a revelation that he had to turn from sin. And God spoke to his heart and told him, as, as his ex-wife had cheated on him, the Lord revealed that he was a bigger cheater than what she was. And so when he heard that, wow. he started weeping. Wow. He came out of the bathroom and fell on his knees. And Raymond said, what's wrong? And my brother Claiborne said, I feel some kind of power on me. We didn't know anything about the Holy wow. Ghost. Wow. And so when, when he said that, my brother Raymond said, you want me to take it to the doctor? <laughs> he said, no. He said, we got to turn from sin. Yeah. And so he said, we got to make Mandy, that was the girl who was living there. Yeah. We got to make her like a sister. And so, so long story short, she didn't want to turn to yeah, God. So, so that probably didn't turn out so well. No. Yeah. In fact, she overdosed. Oh, no. And died. Wow. And, but, so Rayburn was walking his dog one day. God spoke to him audibly. Never heard this preach by any preacher. Never read it that he knew of. But God audibly spoke to go into churches and tell people to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. No man told him that. God spoke it. And so, Raven came running back with his dog, pulling him, <laughs> just about dragging the dog back yeah. And he told Clayton what God has spoken. So they went to two or three churches before they found a church that would baptize them. I bet those the churches went to the no. And see, they were naive. Yeah. Because as of then, <clears throat> I didn't know. And they didn't know, you know. And they looked like rock and roll guys. Too. Oh, way down here. <laughs> here, you know. Likewise for me. Yeah. And so so that that's the way it all started from my brothers and then 
they quit the band before I did. Yeah. And of course, now they were in another band mm -hmm. called Angel. Okay. Now they weren't angels before the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, and, and but you know, God used me to. God used Keith to tell me. Right. God used me to tell my two brothers. Now, now, now when did uh, uh, Gerald Hagen come into the picture? Because wasn't he? Then you have you had Keith working on you on one side, and, yep. and Gerald pulling on you on the other side. Well, Gerald was after Keith. Okay. And so, Gerald Hagen was planted at this fish place in Laurel, Mississippi, and every time I get the munches fish, smoking dope, I'd want to go there. <laughs> and one day I was in there and I met him and found out he played the piano and he knew who I was and he asked me to come to church. And so just to get him off my back, I said, yeah, I'll come. And I said, what time? He said, six o'clock, uh, every Sunday night. So that's, that's when sinners would go Sunday nights. Because that's when it, they had church. But you weren't planning to go to church that way. Oh, no. Okay. Not really. And I, I, I never like to tell somebody that I was going to do something and not do it, mm -hmm. even before I didn't know the Lord. And so every time I go past that place, I would always remember, that's where I told that guy I was going to come to church. If I go back up in there, he's going to ask me to come back to church and ruin my meal. <laughs> and so one day I went back up in there, and uh, I waited till around three o'clock, you know, in the afternoon, where hopefully he wouldn't be there. Right. And so I went in there and ordered up my fish. He wasn't there for that moment, but he must have been on a break. So he comes back out there and he starts it again. Hey, when are you coming to church? And so I thought, well, the only way I'm going to get him off my back is just go to church and I'll stay a song or two, make my exit. And so that Sunday night I went mm -hmm. and brother it was church I'd never been in a lively church like that church yeah. well you know I mean I you know as a little boy I, I remember going to an Assembly of God church in Jackson yeah. Mississippi and, and I remember they were pretty lively uh, and I loved the music more than what the Baptists were yeah. playing you know and so anyway, all that said, when I went out to the church, um, I, I met people that I felt like that they loved me, yeah. even though I looked different, yeah. even though I was way out there. And so that was my first time to pray that night. But I didn't, I didn't give everything to God because, you know, I, I held on to giving up a lot of stuff but a can lot you, of it can you tell and if you don't want to tell this that's okay but you this is several years ago you talked about they had an evangelist that was there and he leaned over to the pastor and he oh, said yeah <laughs> oh yeah i'm gonna get that boy yeah his name was brother Shu. that was the first time i ever went to church okay and um i had my elton john platforms on and had long hair and uh, so, and I dressed up like Saturday night, you know, uh, clothes, you know, we dressed wild. Yeah. And uh, so I, I... You had on your silk shirt. Oh and yeah, stuff, and yeah. all that. And so uh, when I walked in the back door, the Brother Shoe turned to Brother Morgan, who was later to become my pastor. Yeah. Uh, he, he turned to Brother Morgan and said, my God, Elder, what was that that just walked in the back door? And so Gerald had already told Brother Morgan that I was coming to church. Yeah. And and he told him who I was. And I was playing rock and roll and I had this song out that was going up the charts and all this stuff. And so Brother Morgan was expecting me. Yeah. And so when Brother Shu said that, uh, he, uh, Brother Morgan said, he plays in a rock and roll band, David and the Giants. And he said, I'm going to skin his hide tonight. That's the words he yeah, used. Yeah. I'm going to skin his hide tonight. And Brother Morgan said, do you believe in pastoral authority? 
He said, well, you know I do. He said, well, I'm taking authority over you right now. Don't you touch him. Wow. And so that... <laughs> My goodness, brother. Uh, so what would have happened? Oh, it, it, would, it would have been over. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. If Brother Morgan had allowed him... But now, Brother Shu, from yeah. what I understand, was yeah. a great man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't say that. I've never met him, but... Yeah. But, uh, but, but And he was a great teacher, and I didn't know anything... But we got to love. And so yeah. I told Brother Shu, I said, I loved your message. I said, to me, you're as good as Billy Graham. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that that was really not a compliment to Brother Shu. Yeah. But I didn't mean it you know, yeah. in any kind of way. I, I meant it as... And, and Billy Graham is a, was a great speaker. He's a great speaker, yeah. a great teacher to, to lead people to God. You right. Know? So how long did it take how, from, from your first visit to the church? How long did it take for you to finally get in? All the, the way? Yeah. Okay. It took... Uh, I th and, and, and I'm asking this because there's people, they'll say, I've been witnessing to this person. I've been talking to these people. And it's like they'll never come. Yeah. So, so that's why... It I, was possibly, possibly, um, maybe... Close to a year, wow! I, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember that Raven and Claiborne around February, uh, and that year was like from '76 um, until. I, let me. I'm gonna hold that date for just a minute. Okay. Uh, but so when Raven and Claiborne gave their lives to God, uh, they gave away furniture. They gave away this. And my mother, and daddy thought. I was like, give a step away. They read in the scriptures, you know, every what you give up in this life, <laughs> you'll gain it back. And, the, and, and okay. they were going to preach. They didn't know anything as yeah. of yet. Okay. And they hadn't even yet been baptized yet. Okay. Uh, and they didn't heard the voice of the Lord. So my bro <clears throat> mother and daddy called me to come home and that, uh, that it was urgent. And so I went home and. Uh, and my sister Dorothy was there too, yeah, yeah. and my daddy, and we had a family meeting, and my mother said that she felt like that Reverend Claiborne were going off the deep end, that they were going to start traveling yeah. in, in a Volkswagen van, and, and they're selling equipment and giving away furniture, giving away this and that, and, I, and all of a sudden it was like a revelation. I said, they're not crazy. Wow. I said, they're trying to be exactly what the Word of God says. Yeah. And not taking it. If you got one coat uh, or two yeah. coats, Get you one. know. Yeah. I said, they're, they're just trying to do what the scriptures are saying. They're okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to invite them to come and live with me. And so I had a, an apartment. And so. Um, I invited them to come live with me, and here was two 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 brothers that was on fire for God, and here was one that was still running. Even though I was still going to church on yeah. Sunday night, every Sunday night that I wasn't playing in in clubs or off, or driving back from a date with a college or something. So there was something drawing you. Oh no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, and so it was April fifteenth. 1977 but be before that I had three car wrecks and, I, and and after that well if you read the Bible while you're driving you're bound to have a car you're going to have a car wreck. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I was smoking dope yeah. and I, every time that something happened I would make a promise God I'm never going to do that again then I got busted April 15th 1977 and that that changed my world wow and May 29th 1977, I completely, in a man's home, uh, one night, I'd gone to church, and that, that same night now, and I went to the altar, and I asked the Lord to fill me with the Holy Ghost. And it was like the Lord spoke to me, you haven't given me all of you. Wow. And so I turned around, and Claiborne, I'm sorry, Rayburn was crying. Okay. And I said, why are you crying? He said, I feel like tonight 
was a crossroads. Wow. And so that night, I didn't tell him, but that night going to the church, I said, Lord, if you don't give me the Holy Ghost tonight, I'm never going back because it's getting embarrassing yeah. that I go to church and I, I go to the altar asking for the Holy Ghost. And so the, after church, we went to Shoney's and after Shoney's, they wanted to go to Brother Wyndham's house. Okay. Brother Wyndham was a man, and it would take a long time. I'm trying to convince I've this. heard of Brother Wyndham. Okay. okay. It, it's another testimony in itself, but he was a man of God. And he was like, and so they invited me to come hear his testimony. Okay. So it was close to the recording studio. He lived at a crossroads, and it was a crossroads of my life. Yeah, where I met God. And this crossroads, when I walked in the door, Praise they didn't God. tell me anything about Brother Wyndham, but he was lying on the floor and dying with cancer. He yeah. witnessed to me, told me about God, told me about angels he'd seen. He told me so many fascinating stories. And so I listened until, it, I, I feel like it was around two or three o'clock in the morning. And so I had to pay the band and I knew that they'd already probably come and gone. Uh -huh. And I said, I gotta go Brother Wyndham. Thank you so much for, for your time. And I got out and it was kind of cool that night. And it was in May, but it was still kind of chilly outside. And the guy that was with me, um, had the car already cranked. And so I was walking out the door. I had one foot out the door, one foot in the door. He said, David, he said, I got one question to ask you before you go. I said, what is it? He said, do you want to be saved or not? Oh, wow. Just like that. Yeah. Do you want to be saved or not? I said to myself, do I want to be saved or not? And then I will remember, and I was looking right at the man. Wow. And I remembered, my daddy told me a scripture. He didn't know many scriptures, but he knew one. If a man gains a whole world and then loses his soul, why is it going to prosper? Right. right. And I weighed everything out my whole life. And the wisest decision I ever made was, I said, I want to be saved. Yeah. So I walked back over. After he asked me, he said, come back over here. Fall on your knees. And I fell on my knees. I lifted my hands and I gave the Lord my heart, yeah. my soul, my sin. I gave him everything. I gave up all the sins yeah. and the flesh and the sins of the flesh that night. And um, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not reminded wow. where he brought me from. That was the night. That was the night. You May feel it that night. Well, June the 2nd, June. I was baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. June the 5th, I received the Holy Ghost. Praise God. 1977. Thank you, Jesus. That's what, my story. What a, what a journey. Let, let's, let me bring you to where I came in contact with David and the Giants. Okay. Uh, 1979. I won't tell you how old I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was a lot younger than what I am now. Okay. And a friend invites me to come here. Uh, this band that's playing in Wisner, Louisiana. And Brother Nugent. Brother Nugent. And so uh, I go and uh, and I'm like, what's what's all this equipment? Oh, that's their, that's their, I said, they don't even have a drummer, <laughs> you know. And that was 79? 79. And it was just before Keith came. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys played and sang. I felt the Spirit of God. And, uh, you know, I'm just a kid, and I'm like, man, I'm, I don't want any of this church stuff. And But long story short, I'm not going to go into all my stuff, but I did uh, receive the Holy Ghost, you know, because of David and the Giants. Wow. And I, I began to learn to play uh, guitar 
and everybody else is learning Sweet Home Alabama and all this stuff, and I'm learning uh, uh, all, the, all the David and the Giants stuff. You open up your heart, having to learn that. Wow. Learning on those rides off of there, so so praise God. Praise hey, God. I, I want to I want to ask you because I uh, uh, we have a mutual friend, uh, Jim Easterling, Easterling Music. Yeah. Uh, I had a uh, I went and got David Huff had an Ovation guitar. I had to go buy an Ovation guitar, and uh, and I told him why I was getting. It. He said, he said those boys, he said that's some of the craziest boys I ever met. He said they came through here, and uh, said that uh, he said they didn't cleaned up and everything. And I asked them if they still playing. They said yes. Said we still playing rock and roll music, but we playing for the rock. We playing for Jesus. We playing in all these churches. And he said, boys, it's never gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> we heard that. We heard that a lot of times. It's still working though. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So you. So when you. I mean, I thought it was the best thing that I'd ever seen whenever I saw David and the Giants. But uh, you had you had some, you guys had some paths to blaze and some bridges to cross. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, it was worth it all. Amen. You know, when you consider what all the early disciples went through, right? Uh, you know, with people walking out when you start playing. Those things are so minor, minor you know. It, 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 it hurts you and makes you feel like, why, you know, because we knew who we were right. and we know who we are. Amen. And so we're, we're not taken back by, you know, what people say, but it still does hurt, you know, that, that, um, that people didn't understand. But on the other hand, the, the ones that didn't understand there were so many that did Amen. understand. Thank God. Well, I, I look at, if you go back to, I'm going to go back to early David and the Giants. If you go back to the to uh, the Alpha and Omega project, you know, and, and even Step in My Shoes, you know, you, so you're saying people were walking out on that, that on those? Oh, yeah. Like, see, that, and you look at stuff today, brother, that was so <laughs> calm. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, if you, you know, I had tears in my eyes when I went to Urshan College. My wife and I went there when they did a live album, and yeah. it was phenomenal. Right. I, I'll never forget that. How far that yeah. music had come, and that the whole, everything about it was just like, I had to, nobody saw me cry. I mean, my wife didn't even know it, but it, it did something to me that that we helped bring in something oh, yeah. that was forbidden. And um, it, it, it touched my heart, you know, and, uh, and so many great singers Oh man, yeah. Uh, I, I I was amazed, and um, you know, it, it made me happy that that we could have been a part of something. Yeah, you blazed the trail. Praise God. Amen. And listen, you know, speaking of blazing the trail, I ain't stopping blazing the trail <laughs> in the yeah. name of Jesus. <laughs> I feel like I'm just beginning. You're just getting started. I feel like that. Something. I'm serious. Amen. I'd like to introduce my wife tonight. Uh, my wife is Twyla. And, uh, um, I saw my wife to be. Yeah. In Mobile, Alabama, we were singing, <laughs> and so I knew that she was going to be my wife. Yeah. I never even met her. Yeah. But I knew it. And my brother Rayburn was talking to her. He came over and he said, "If you ever get married," he said, "That's the kind of girl you ought to marry." I said, why do you say that? He said, because she was in college. She gave up everything uh -huh. to serve the Lord. She was going to Mississippi State University. So anyway, long story short, I started praying about her. I finally got her phone number after seeing her a couple more times. And so we went out and um, 
and she was so shy and I was so shy, all we would do was listen to pre preaching tapes <laughs> and Christian music, you know. And so I, I started praying and fasting. Okay. And here's the story. I fasted and prayed for my wife. Okay. For God to show me. And I, I, I put a fleece before the Lord. I said, Lord, if you'll let two stars fall at one time, then I'll know it's okay. I would see a star fall, but I never saw two. And then one night, I audibly heard the voice of the Lord. Yeah. And the voice was monotone. It was not high, it was not low, it was monotone. It went along and the voice was saying, keep on singing, keep on singing my song over and over and over. It got so loud that I woke up and I sat up in the bed and it kept get, it didn't just stay there. It kept getting louder. It was so loud within me. I wow. said, yes, Lord. And when I said, yes, Lord, the voice stopped immediately and it was quiet and the Lord was there. And I said, Lord, what about twelve? And the voice said, marry her. Wow. So the next day, uh, b before that, I woke up my brother Rayburn because by this time we were living in the recording studio there in Laurel, okay. Mississippi. Okay. And I said, Rayburn, I said, the, the Lord just spoke to me. He cut his light on and he said, what did he say? And I told him what I just got through saying. So the next day I went to see my future wife and I had it all worked out. <laughs> what I was going to say when I proposed. And so we were sitting together at her aunt, aunt and uncle's house upstairs. And so I looked at her and I said, I'm, I'm going to marry you. You told her. I didn't ask her. <laughs> I told her. And of course, she needed to say yes. Yeah. Because she knew when I told her what had happened, she knew and I would never lie. Yeah. So I'm still on my honeymoon. Praise God. After 42 years. I remember when you guys got married. I remember. June 22nd. Praise Three o'clock in the morning. I lay awake in my bed. There's nothing around but the darkness of night. I heard a voice. Let, let me ask you about some, some David and the Giants music now. Some stuff I've always wondered about. Okay. Okay. I, it's, I call this a, a save David and the Giant song because you wrote this before before Christ. Is this right? The Glory Hallelujah? Yeah. I wrote that probably 1973 yeah. and recorded it in California with MGM Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, you did Lord, Lord then. Where did they? Yeah. I didn't know the Lord, Lord then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... It just fits though. Yeah. It, it, it was... You look back at things like that, and I, I feel like my whole life was mapped out by the Lord. Yeah. And that was just a part of the journey. We played that same song. Uh, I stopped into a church yeah. to get salvation. I mean, we, we said the name of Jesus. And to all these people a, in the clubs, we would sing glory, hallelujah. Uh, and not knowing God. Yeah. But now it makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah. So when you got you got you got the Holy Ghost, I heard you say one time that you still had some club dates left that you had to fill. Yeah. We we emptied some clubs <laughs> at, because I had to play out my commitments. Yeah. I, mean, I had contracts. I went to my pastor and to, you know to get his feelings on it. He yeah. said, "Well, he said uh, you you're a new p person in Christ, but he said uh, a part of uh, responsibility." is you signed an agreement. Yeah. And he said, if I were you, I would do the, do your commitments. He said, and tell people about Jesus. And I did exactly that. I would, the club owners didn't like me. <laughs> so you would, you were playing the clubs and then talk uh, on, about Jesus? On breaks, I would okay. talk to people about Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And some people are serving God today because of hearing me talk about the Lord at when they were drunk. Wow. Yeah. You you were, you came to uh, our church and we had some folks there from uh, 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 down south Mississippi and uh, they came up they were up in North Louisiana and they were walking and they went David and the Giants 
we used to go hear them in the bar room. <laughs> and they didn't know yeah. the transformation. And they got the Holy Ghost that day. Praise and, God. And, you know, uh, it was Eva, Eva Black's mom and dad. That's who that was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Eva Black? Yeah. I want to tell you something about that sister. That's one of the greatest singers of all time. She is great. She, God has blessed her with uh, some pipes, bro. She can do it. And she's anointed. Oh, she is very, very anointed. anointed. So, so if somebody is, is uh, you know, they're, they're like, uh, man, I, I want to get into the ministry. I want to, man, I like what David Huff is doing. I want to, you know, how, how do, you know, what, what advice would you give to someone? Well, first of all, you got to be called. Mm -hmm. um, what's your... Um, I mean, to me, um, there has to be a gifting. Right. And you got to know that the gifting comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And to, to get into ministry, it costs something. Right. It costs your life. Amen. You know, too many people are alive today preaching and teaching when they should be dead. I don't mean dead, literally. I mean dead out to everything that's within yeah. them that's contrary to the principles yeah. of Jesus Christ. Because they're and, doing it for the wrong reasons. Right, exactly. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, there are so many men and ladies of God out there that are doing exactly what's right. Right before the Lord. What I like, what I like about your ministry, is that uh, I mean, I like to hear preaching, teaching, as much as anybody. But there are people that will not walk across the street to hear a preacher. But yet, if if David Huff comes to town, you know, well, we're going to go hear this rock and roll guy. They'll drive a hundred miles to hear you, yeah. and then you'll put the gospel in there. Yeah. The Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. is wise. You gotta use wisdom. And I try to, I pray for wisdom. That was one of, the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all men liberally. And then when I read that in the book of James, I claimed that in the name of Jesus. That's for me, Lord. And I, yeah. I, and I didn't stop back then. I'm still praying for, you know, for wisdom, you know, to, mm -hmm. to be able to reach somebody. You know, it, it, you can come on too strong. I mean, I have a next door neighbor. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, uh, I invited them to come where I'm gonna be singing uh, soon. Yeah. And, and, and they're from Brazil. Oh, wow. It's no accident that they're there. And by sure. faith, sure. we will win them. Amen, I believe it. I believe it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So the style of music is changing. We're, 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 we'll wrap this up here. But the style of music is changing, it's not, it's more praise and worship yeah. these days, but you you have some praise and worship stuff, and and I don't know if if you did it on purpose or if it's just stuff that you've written. Uh, uh, this is my song of praise. Our camera guy was talking about that this morning. Uh, my song of praise. Uh, uh, speak your name. You know, I mean these these are these are songs that that are being sung in the church. You know. Praise God. Yeah. Well, I, I love that fact. Before we ever showed up to that little church in Laurel, Mississippi, yeah. where Gerald Hagen was, right. it was prophesied two years before we ever went there yeah. that there was going to be a band to come there and to get saved, and they were going to be a group that was going to be an outreach group for the lost. Out of Laurel, Mississippi. Out of Laurel, Mississippi. So the, the, the man that that prophesied that was from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I never was told who he was. I okay. wish I did know. Yeah. But so when we went there, Brother Morgan had forgotten it. And so... They're, after, they're looking for a bluegrass group, brother. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> that was the kind of music he liked. Yeah. He told me that later. But, but there was a, a, a man named Brother Bert Pitts who was in a church there. And after we were there for a while, he went to Brother Morgan and said, do you remember so-and-so prophesying that a band was coming here and going to get saved yeah. and was going to be an outreach group for the lost? And he remembered it. He called us in and told us that. And so 
So our music wow. back then yeah. has always been to reach out. Uh, you know, praise and worship, we do that. Yeah. And, and we still do that. Sure. But our our concern, we're going to have that to do Amen. for until forever. But our focus, our focus right now is on people that doesn't know the Lord. Amen. And, and, and our songs, if you if you look at my new album, Higher Power, I don't know mm -hmm. if you have that yet. Uh, yeah. So, of, course, of course I have it. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you look on there, songs on there, mm -hmm. they usually have something that if a sinner heard it, you know, uh, it would connect with him. Sure. Where a praise and worship song might not connect with him. Exactly. So much. Yeah. And, and that's who we are. And I'm not saying, hey, everybody, you need to be like, a, I'm saying God, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he appoints each one to a certain call, you know, in a certain place that you, yeah. you're supposed to be in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've been blessed beyond measure just, just for the opportunity to come and sit down and, and talk to you today. Well, you praise know. God. Amen. I've enjoyed it. I've Amen. enjoyed you being here. And there's a young man behind the cameras that, that uh, I've known for since he's a little boy. He's a, he is a... And he's he, at Urshan College now and graduating. And, uh, he was a Holy Ghost surprise. That's what he was. And I'm telling you right now. Awesome. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you, Brother David. We've had, thank would you. you. Do you mind? Would you mind praying us out? Could you do yeah. that? Lord, you are so awesome. And thank you for choosing us, God. You chose us before we, we chose you, Lord. And we just bless your holy name. We thank you, God. And Lord, if there would be one person that might would see this in some way, somehow, dear God, I pray that they would be moved and um, moved to the place that they would surrender all to find you, Lord. And dear God, I pray your blessings upon my two brothers here and uh, lead them, guide them, show them the rest of the path all the way home. Because, Lord, we're not going halfway. We're going all the way with you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you, God, for the calling upon each one of our lives. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. I love you, Brother David. Love you, brother. Praise God. It's been awesome. Fivefold Voices. Thank you for joining us today for Fivefold Voices. It's our prayer that this has been a tremendous blessing to you. We ask that you like, subscribe, and share this very special presentation. Blessings to you today in Jesus' name from Fivefold Voices. Five